Surah Al-Safat, Ayah number 75. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. وَلَقَدْ and certainly مَا دَانَا He called out to us. نُوحٌ نُوح عليه السلام Certainly, for a fact, indeed, نُوح called out to Allah. What happened then? فَمَا نِعْمَ فَ then, la, surely, ni'ma, excellent. Al-mujibun, the respondents. Meaning, how excellent was Allah in his response to Nuh alayhi salam. In this ayah and the following verses, we see many prophets are mentioned. Even though their stories are mentioned in greater detail elsewhere in the Quran. Why are the stories of the prophets mentioned over here, starting from the story of Nuh alayhi salam? Because in the previous verses, what was mentioned? The two destinations in the hereafter were described in detail. One of hell and the other one of Jannah, of paradise. And before that, a scene of the day of judgment was mentioned, in which people are seen blaming each other where one group is blaming the other that you pressured us into disbelief. You bullied us into disbelief. You came to us from our right, meaning from the good side, or with all your pressure and all your might, you bullied us into faithlessness. So over here, examples of the prophets are given, that how they lived in the most difficult circumstances. We see that Nuh alayhi salam, he strove for 950 years. That's not a short time. So many years he fought against that darkness. The example of Ibrahim alayhi salam is given. He was born in the hub of idolatry. Then we see example of Musa alayhi salam is given in the surah, where his enemy was Fir'aun. So many prophets are mentioned over here, and a proof is being established that when you want to be on the truth, when you want to remain firm upon the truth, you can, provided that you are determined. The more trial matters, whether it is the length of time, or it is the great numbers of people who are around you, or the great darkness that you find yourself in, it does not matter, because the light of faith is where it is inside. So if a person is determined from within, then external pressures, they don't matter. So the first example given over here is of Nuh alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ نَادَانَا Certainly, indeed, he called out to us. Nada, yunadi, nida. Nida is to call out, to yell out desperately. So he desperately called out to us. He cried out for help. When? When he had despaired of his people. He begged Allah for relief from his people. He begged Allah to save the rest of humanity. Why? Because Nuh salam, he was sent to the first people who started shirk, who were upon idolatry. And for 950 years, he called them to Tawheed. And he called them in so many different ways. Surah Nuh, if we read it, we see the detail in which Nuh salam, he called his people to Tawheed. So for example, in ayah 5 and 6 of Surah Nuh, Nuh salam said, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُ قَوْمِ لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا O oh my Lord, I have called my people, I have invited my people by night and by day. Meaning, I spared no time. By night and by day, فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَاغًا But my calling them did not increase them except in running away from the truth even more. So Nuh salam, he did dawah to his people for so long. And what happened? When he saw nothing from them except denial and bullying because they physically abused him, they socially abused him also, they bullied him, they mocked at him, they made fun of him. In so many ways, they denied him. So what happened? He called out to his Lord. Nadana. He called out to Allah. In Surah Amr, Ayah 10, we learn Nuh alayhi salam, فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرُ 
he called out to his Lord that, Oh my Lord, I am Maghlub. I have been overcome by my people. Fam tafur, so you help. And what was his dua that you help? Meaning you take me out of these people. It's not, my dawah is not working anymore. I have tried for 950 years. If they had to believe, they would have believed. And he was worried for the rest of humanity. That if this population, if they are upon shirk, what's going to happen to the next generation and the generation after them? They're going to go deeper and deeper into idolatry. So in Surah Nuh, Ayah 26, 27, his dua is mentioned. What was his dua? وَقَالَ نُوحٌ And Nuh said, رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا That, oh my Lord, do not even leave upon the surface of the earth a single home of those who deny you. Why? Because إِنَّكَ إِن تَذَرْهُمْ Indeed, if you were to leave them, you bin your ibadak. They will misguide your servants. Wala yalidu illa fajiran kafara. And they will not give birth to anyone except the defiantly disobedient and extreme rejectors. Meaning such are the people who are going to be born of these people. So what was his dua then? Nadana Nuhum. That, oh Allah, you help me against these people and you help me establish Tawheed. Because if these people live on, then shirk will take over. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ فَلَا نِعْمَ So surely how excellent, best, المجيبون. Mujibun is a plural of the word mujib. And who is mujib? One who gives jawab, meaning one who responds. One who answers, one who accepts the request that is made to him. And mujibun is plural. Ni'm al mujibun, excellent responders. Who is? Allah is. The best responders. Who is? Allah is. But you notice something, the plural is being used for Allah. Why? It's the plural of royalty, of majesty. That certainly, out of all those who respond, Allah's response is indeed the best. If you think about it, when we are in difficulty, when we find ourselves helpless, when we cannot do, when we cannot accomplish our goals ourselves, then we seek external help. Isn't it? When we use all of our internal uh, strength and ability, we exhaust every effort, every ability that we have, and still we cannot accomplish our goal, we seek external help. We ask the people who are around us, whether they are family or friends, right? Or we try to get help from others in any way possible. But sometimes what happens? People respond, and other times they don't respond. Sometimes they pity us, they agree with us, they say things like, I hear you, I understand, but I'm sorry. Or they offer help, but instead of helping us, they cause more damage. Has this ever happened? And then you ask them, please, let me do this myself. Right? For instance, you ask somebody to help you in the kitchen, and instead of helping you, they ruin whatever you're preparing, so you tell them, keep away. I've seen many mothers do this with their daughters. They bully them, first of all. You do nothing, you do nothing, you do nothing. Right? And they hand over the broom to them. And as the poor girl is trying to clean the floor, the mother says, leave it, I'll do it myself. Right? So people, when we ask them for help, no matter how genuine they are, what happens? In the way that they respond, I mean, they're only human. Isn't it? They cannot fully relieve us of our difficulty. Allah says, فَلَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ How excellent is Allah, the one who responds. Out of all those who respond, Allah's response is always the best. It is always, always excellent. Because sometimes what happens, we ask Allah for something, and He gives us something else that's even better for us, that we never even thought about. فَلَا نِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ Allah's response is indeed the best response. So over here, it is as if we are being taught a lesson that Allah responded to the prayer of Nuh alayhi salam. So you, O servants, also ask Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever of you, for whoever of you, the door of supplication is open, then the doors of mercy have been opened for him. 
Meaning if anyone has been given the ability to make dua to Allah, then indeed the gates of mercy and blessing have been opened up for him. Because dua is the way to success. The Prophet ﷺ continued, he said, Allah is not asked of anything, meaning more beloved to him, than being asked for afiyah. Meaning the best thing that Allah loves to be asked for is what? Afiyah, well-being, safety, protection. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the supplication, meaning dua, benefits against that which strikes and also that which does not strike. Meaning whether a problem has already happened or it has not already happened, it's yet to come. The dua will help you with regards to your present situation and your future difficulties also. So the Prophet ﷺ said, hold fast, O worshippers of Allah, to supplication. Hold fast to dua. Adhere to dua. Meaning make dua. Never stop making dua. Because who is Allah? He is the excellent responder. So how is the response to Nuh a.s. dua? Allah says, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ And we saved him. We delivered him. We rescued him. And not just him, but also وَأَهْلَهُ And his family. His family, which family? His children. But not just his children, it was basically the people of his deen. Ahlu dinihi. The people of his deen. Those who believed in him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. From what? Min al al azim. From the affliction that is great. Meaning from the great affliction. Allah saved him and Allah saved his followers. The word karb, kaf, ra, ba. We have done this word earlier also. Karb means ghamm shadid Extreme, intense grief. Suffocating distress. Meaning such distress that suffocates you. That causes anxiety. That causes unrest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him and his followers from the great distress. Firstly we see that him and his family were saved. Who were truly his family? Those who believed in him. Not necessarily those who were related to him by blood or marriage, because his wife was not of those who were saved. One of his sons also did not survive the great flood. So who was the Ahl that was saved? It was those who believed in him. And what was this great distress, this great affliction? This can be understood in two ways. First of all, al karb al azim refers to the adha of his people, the hurt that they caused him. That was really a great distress. Because constant denial, and not just denial but also bullying, that went on for 950 years, when Nuh tried every possible way of warning them, still they didn't believe this caused him great anguish. In Surah Al-Kahf, and remember Surah Al-Kahf is a Makki Surah. Right? So this was within the first 13 years of the Prophet Wasallam's da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَلَىٰ That because these people are not believing in you, you would almost destroy yourself, you would almost kill yourself, meaning you're worrying too much. And definitely, the prophets of Allah grieved Allah because of the denial of their people. This is something that is very understandable and it's very unique because people who have been given a certain responsibility, especially when it is to do with some other people, like for example, a teacher is to teach a group of children, right? a person is to lead a group of people, and when those children, when those people do not cooperate, then this causes extreme distress to the teacher, to the instructor, to whoever is in charge. Because it doesn't just mean failure. It means that because these children are not learning, they are going to suffer for the rest of their lives. It's like a doctor who is trying to give medication to the patient, and the patient is refusing. Some doctors are like, I don't care, you know, I got my money from you, so that's all I need. 
But some doctors, they genuinely want to save lives. They genuinely care about the people who are sick. So if a sick person is refusing that medication, yes, it will cause grief to the doctor. But the grief of a prophet is unmatched. The grief of a prophet for his people is unmatched. Why? Because the level of sincerity and well-wishing that the prophets had for their people is something that even a mother does not have for her child. Because after some time, even a mother gives up. You don't want to eat? Don't eat. You don't want to study? Don't study. Right? She gets frustrated and she quits. Mothers, do you agree with me? Does it happen? It happens. I mean, to a certain point, you tell your child, you advise your child, and then there comes a point where you say, you know what, Becca, you're an adult. Go and mind your own business and let me live in peace now. Right? Do whatever you want. I've told you enough. Right? But a prophet, if he leaves his people, what does it mean? They are upon his guidance. They don't just suffer in this world. They suffer forever in the hereafter. So, for a prophet to face denial from his people, this is al karbul azim This is extreme distress, extreme agony. It's suffocating. It doesn't let that prophet rest. It's amazing. If you think about it, any other person would quit. The kind of abuse that the Prophet ﷺ experienced, he's going around, in the streets of Makkah, he's going around in the streets of Mina, doing da'wah, and right behind him is Abu Lahab insulting him, denying him. His own very uncle. Any other person would certainly quit. They would say it's not worth it. But the Prophet ﷺ continued. So, min al karb al azim the karb is referring to the denial of his people. And not just their denial, but they abused him. We learn, for example, in Surah Nuh about how his people even beat him. They even beat him. And also we learn about how they, they mocked at him. Earlier we have learned about when Nuh was constructing the ship, what happened? Did they make fun of him? They did. So min al karb al azim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from that. And secondly, al karb al azim also refers to the great flood. Because that is how this nation was punished. And why is it called karb? Because death itself is painful. But dying by drowning is even more painful. It's suffocating. And dying by Allah's punishment is far worse. In Surah Nuh, Ayah 25, we learn, مِمَّا خَطِئَاتِهِمْ أُغْرِقُوا فَأُدْخِلُوا نَعْمَا فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْصَارًا so, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ مِنَ الْكَرْبِ الْعَظِيمِ وَجَعَلْنَا And we made ذُرِّيَّتَهُ His descendants, his offspring. وَمَا الْبَاقِينَ هُمْ they الْبَاقِينَ The ones who remain. Meaning, it was the descendants of Nuh alayhi salam that remained, that survived. الْبَاقِينَ is the plural of the word بَاقِينَ Baqin from the root letter is baqaf, yeah? Baqa, to remain, to continue. So it was only the children of Nuh a.s. that survived the flood, meaning all human race is from the progeny of who? Nuh a.s. And this is why we believe that Nuh a.s. is Adam al-Thani, the second Adam, meaning the second father of all humanity. How? That Adam a.s., all children were born of him, all people are from his progeny, but at the time of Nuh a.s., all people that lived were finished except for Nuh a.s. and those who believed in him. So after Nuh a.s., all of human race came from who? From the progeny of Nuh a.s. It is said that Nuh a.s. had four sons, Ham, Sam, Kanaan, and Yafith. Ham, Sam. It is said that the Arabs, the Persians, the Byzantines, the Samites, Africans, they are from the descendants of Ham and Sam. Right? So the people of Africa, Asia, from the descendants of who? Ham, Sam. Even those who spread out to Europe. And Canaan, he drowned. Canaan is the one who drowned. And we learned this in which surah? Surah Hud. The fourth is Yafith. 
And Yafi is, it is said that uh, Juj and Majuj, they are from his progeny. Or some have said that even the Asians, some Asians like the Chinese, Turks, they are also from his progeny. Allahu Alam, regardless of how exactly this happened, what we know for a fact is, وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِي All human race is now from the descendants of who? Nuh a.s. And even otherwise, if you think about it, Nuh a.s. is definitely the father of believers. Because it was from his progeny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose prophets. In Surah Hadid, Ayah 26, we learn, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَ النُّبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابِ We sent Nuh, Ibrahim, and it was from their progeny that we sent the prophets and the books. Meaning the prophets were from the progeny of who? Nuh a.s. So, وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ وَتَرَكْنَا And we left عَلَيْهِ for him فِي الْآخِرِينَ among the later generations. We left something for him. We left, when something is left, what does it mean? It's allowed to stay. Okay? Like for example, your whole family is at home. Your dad says, everybody let's go. Alright? But then they leave you, meaning they allow you to stay at home. Everybody's going for groceries, boring, you say, I want to stay home. So you stay home. You've been left, you've been allowed to stay. So Tawakna over here gives a meaning of we preserved. We let it remain, meaning we preserved. For who? For Nuh a.s. What did we preserve for him? Fil akhirin Amongst the later ones. Akhirin, plural of the word akhir. Akhir is one who comes last, meaning later generations, communities until the end of time. What is it that we preserved for him until the end of time? Amongst the people who came after him? Salamun. Peace. Ala Nuhin upon Nuh fil alameen amongst the people of the worlds. Meaning, we preserved for him a favorable mention. Sana'ul Hasan. Praise. Even after Nuh salam's departure. If you think about it, Nuh salam came thousands and thousands of years before us. But till today, when his name is mentioned, what do we say? Nuh alayhi salam. So this is salamun. This is salam from Allah. That Allah preserved for Nuh alayhi salam. Amongst two, fil alameen. Al alameen, the worlds. Fil alameen, amongst the worlds, meaning amongst the people of the worlds. In other words, all of mankind. The believers shall receive salam from Allah in Jannah. Salamun qawlan min Rabbi rahim This is where? In Jannah. But Nuh alayhi salam is amongst those servants whom Allah chose and sent salam upon him even in this world. And not just at the time when he survived the flood, but until the end of time. We see in Surah Hud, Ayah 48, Allah says, قِيلَ يَا نُوحَ هُتُ بِسَلَامٍ مِّنَّا وَبَرَكَاتٍ عَلَيْكَ It was said that, O Nuh, descend from the ship. How? بِسَلَامٍ مِّنَّا With salam from us. And also, blessings on you. So salam from Allah at the time when Nuh a.s. descended from the ship, meaning after the flood. And secondly, salam until when? Until the end of time. That every time Nuh alayhi name is mentioned, alayhi salam is said. Allah says, Inna kadalika. Indeed we kadalika. Likewise, najizil muhsineen. We reward the doers of good. Those who do ihsan, we reward them in this way. Those who do ihsan, what kind of ihsan? Meaning they do good. What kind of good? At the level of excellence. Why? Because Allah is watching. And ihsan how? With ikhlas. So Allah rewards them. How does Allah reward them? That He responds to their du'as. That He saves them. He grants them success. 
and he preserves a good name for them even in this world. Innahu, indeed he, min ibadina, from our servants, al mu'minin, the believers. Meaning, indeed, Nuh alayhi salam was of our believing servants. He was of those servants who had iman. He was a faithful servant. He was a sincere believer. He did not have any shak in his heart regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regarding his oneness, or regarding his power, or regarding the fact that he responds to du'as, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ ثُمَّ دَنْ أَغْرَقْنَا We drowned. أَغْرَقْنَا غَيْنْ وَاقَافْ غَرْقْ Drown. We drown, meaning we cause to drown in the great flood. Who? Al-Akhirin, the others. Notice the difference over here. It's not Akhirin. This is Akhirin. Akhir, the other one. So Akhirin, the others, meaning those who denied him. So no trace of them remained. So the outcome is very evident. Those who believe in Allah, those who have faith in Him, those who are muhsineen, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them success. And the others, meaning those who deny, then their end is different. ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ